Powerplay Chess, brought to you in association with Kagi. I want to continue my coverage of the Olympiad, looking at a game by Arjun Aragaisi, who is an absolute star for the Indian team. He scored 10 out of 11. More on him in a second. Um, before we look at one of his games, uh, some news of a live broadcast. I'm, I'm going to be doing a live broadcast this Thursday, 6 p.m. UK, 7 p.m. Central European time, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the States. So I'm going to be interviewing Ben Johnson, who hosts the Perpetual Chess podcast, and he's published a book, or New in Chess have published a book called Perpetual Chess Improvement. So it's all about improving your game. It's packed full of excellent practical tips. He's distilled all that wisdom that he's gained from his podcast series, his hundreds of podcasts, put them into this book, and it is really good. So if you're interested in tips for improving your game, do join us on Thursday. And of course, you can ask questions live. Um, if you support me on Patreon, then do ask questions in advance, just write in to me. So Thursday, 6 p.m. UK, to join us. Right, I'll put the link somewhere down there. Um, Arjun Aragaisi against Hannes Stephenson. So Aragaisi is now at number three in the world uh, by on the life rating list. Quite extraordinary rise he's had, and he won the board pri prize on board three and was just a powerhouse. Well, as were most of the Indian players, actually. Um, I, you sometimes see him playing wonderful attacking games, but actually in the Olympiad, well, he had a whole mix of games, but he often won very nice end games, actually. There's some, he has such incredible confidence to persist and find his way through complications. So interesting to see him play the London system. So this is quite a favourite of his, actually. Notice how he delayed developing this bishop. He could have played it on move two, but that gives black the option to still bring that bishop out to f5 or g4. Whereas this way, by delaying a moment, only then did he go for bishop f4 when black no longer has the option to bring that bishop out on the diagonal. But still, this is a very normal way for black to play. And actually, I rather like this idea of bishop d6 opposing the bishop on f4. But Aragaisi is very experienced with this line. He played the most aggressive move, flinging the knight to the outpost, as we've seen a thousand times in London system games. It's very dangerous. And this can, well, it opens up the, the line for the queen and can be the start of a, a dangerous attack. But black has resources. Bishop d3, of course. Compare the two bishops. Beautiful attacking piece. Now black wants to push with c4, pushing the bishop off the diagonal, therefore c3, a necessary move so that you can just drop the bishop back. And Stephenson went for b6 in order to play bishop a6, exchanging off that bishop. I mean, it's a reasonable way to play. Curiously enough, I actually recommended this, uh, this line for black with queen c7 in my... Uh, Patreon opening survey last month, and I think this is a very reasonable way for black to play. And my recommendation goes like this, knight d2, knight c6, putting pressure on that knight, and when that's defended, then black has that square available. So you exchange, and then put the knight on e4, you're ready to play f6. You see, you block out that bishop with the knight. I think that's quite nice for black, but... Well, if you're interested, then do sign up for my Patreon opening survey. Anyway, c3, b6, also reasonable. And bishop a6. So the bishop could drop back, but then this bishop is very well placed, stopping the king castling. So Aragaisi exchanges. And actually, this is being played in quite a few games. But I'm not sure. I, somehow, I'm not too keen about this position of the knight on a6. It's really out of the game. Um, Eric Geisy goes h4 here, which is 
of course, a very ambitious move. Bishop g5 is very interesting. It kind of exploits this pin. And of course, the bishop, well, would be reluctant to drop back because of knight c6. Quite like bishop g5, but h4, also very interesting. Queen c7, putting a little bit of pressure here. h5, continuing, just gaining space. You can get away with this with white because the center is pretty much closed at the moment. Knight e4. So black wants to play f6 to drive away the knight. There are alternatives, but this is not so bad. So f6 is still the threat. So, you know, that could be nasty. So that's why Aragaisi played queen g4. Well, white is very aggressively placed here. You know, on a good day, this rook could swing up the board as well. Quick question. What happens on f6? White to play. You ever think, I'll have a drink. White to play. You only get full marks if you see the whole continuation. Okay. Not too difficult. Check. Knight g6. And checkmate. That's why the rook is so often left on h1 in the London system. It can contribute to the attack. Okay, so queen g4, obviously not f6. So Stefansson took on d4 and played rook e8. So the rook protects the pawn on e6 and black is ready to play f6. So this is a very reasonable defense, actually. Rook d1 played, okay. Could well be a useful move, as we see in a moment. Now, what about f6? This wasn't played, but actually I think it's a reasonable move. The knight has to hop into g6. Now, of course, if that's taken, then we have another attack on the h-file, and that's going to be mate very soon. Uh, possibly queen h5, possibly rook h8. Anyway, it's going to be mate on the h-file. But, of course, black does not need to take. Instead, bishop takes... Uh, excuse me. Uh, bishop takes f4 as possible. I mean, this is reasonable for black. Uh, it's also possible to play just here. And then an exchange and the knight comes back. But black is has a reasonable position there. You know, maybe... Maybe the knight hops back. Finally, the knight gets back into play. But Stefansson found another way to bring the, the knight back into play with knight c5. Uh, it's actually quite a common theme. So, of course, if pawn takes, then bishop takes and black is fine. Queen g3 played. So that's just lining up here. And there's a specific idea behind this. So this wouldn't be too clever because the queen is threatened and mate is threatened. f6 played. Now this turns out to be a mistake. The knight could have just dropped back here and it's still not so clear actually. But f6 was definitely a mistake. Pawn takes knight, so this initiates a whole series of exchanges. So if bishop takes, then that can be taken, and well, you can see that black structure is a bit of a mess, not good. Um, this was taken instead. Okay, black has to keep rolling on because the queen is threatened. Um, well, if A takes, then the bishop just drops back. And again, black structure is just horrible. So pawn takes, threatening the queen. Queen taken. Black just has to roll on now. Check. King E2. So we're in a rook and pawn end game. And is this pawn dangerous? Which one is the more dangerous? Rook c6, rook c8. 
actually just leads to a mass exchange again. And what's the score? So black has five pawns, white has five pawns, however. Look at the quality of the pawns. Three against one on the queen side. These are black's two pass pawns. And they're not going anywhere. In fact, white's king is in the perfect position to scoop up the pawns, but also support the three to one majority. This is absolutely hopeless. Basically, in this kind of position, you just have to roll those pawns as quickly as possible. It's not worth capturing the pawns on the queen on the king side. And this next move is very good. Now, I'm sure there's more than one way to win this. But I like Aragaisi's next move. Rook d1. So this makes sure that black's king is not coming across to blockade these pawns because the rook or at least if it comes it's not it's going to be trapped on the seventh so the rook comes in we'll take that pawn and then these two are, are rolling forward rook g3 now i guess you probably could push that c pawn but this is very well calculated eric guys it realizes that the pawn end game is just winning I mean, if black declines, um, the pawns will just roll. And this is winning. Even though black's king comes across, doesn't matter. White's king is absolutely dominant. Let's push those pawns. The king stands beautifully on e5. So it stops these two pawns from rolling. So if g4, then the king can always just step back to catch it. And then it's white's turn on the other side of the board. c5. Um, here, a5 was played. Uh, I'll just show you the end of the game. a5. And that was taken en passant. And Stephenson resigned. Okay, why did he resign? Okay, the king comes across. A5 doesn't make any odds if this pawn is pushed. King C7, okay, easy win. Push the pawns. King D6, that's the point. King so beautifully placed on E5 can step in to support this pawn. So King D7 threatened. And if King C8, well, you can choose how you want to win this, but. That will do nicely and mate on a8. Um, coming back here, I mean a5, well it doesn't really matter, but okay, let's just see what happens with king c7 instead. Just push them, keep rolling the pawns, roll them again. Okay, black has stopped the pawns for a moment, but again if g4 the king just cleans up and if king a8 just move the king in and okay we might as well go to checkmate once while we're here why not there we go so nice technique well calculated um you know you need to think that through very carefully before you play a move like rook d3 but our guy c is a good calculator but i think he navigated his way through those complications in the middle game very well actually uh, certainly better than his opponent. Um, interesting to see the London catching out yet another player. But I have to say, I have my doubts about b6. I don't think this is the best way for black to play. I think white has a number of quite decent options there. And yes, my recommendation here is queen c7 and knight c6 to put immediate pressure on that night on e5. I'll be showing you more games from the Olympiad. I could look through, I could spend, I don't know, the next year going through games from the Olympiad. There are so, so many interesting ideas cropped up. So um, yeah, that's that's on the menu for the next few, uh, couple, of, probably a couple of weeks actually. Don't forget, live broadcast, 
Thursday, this Thursday, what's the date? Thursday the... This is very professional, isn't it? Thursday the 26th. I have to look at my diary. Thursday the 26th of September. Live broadcast with Ben Johnson, 6pm UK. I'll put the link somewhere down there. Okay, thanks for watching.